Good evening, this is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pod. I'm going to read to you a few news articles that I believe are newsworthy, and I will also po post the link in the uh, description box below so you can go to this site for yourself also. Um, subscribe to it. It's called The Defender, Children's Health Defense News and Views. And the first article is drones with facial recognition are set to fly plus more. The Defender's Big Brother News Watch brings you the latest headlines related to government's abuse of power, including attacks on democracy, civil liberties, and use of mass surveillance by Children's Health Defense Team. Big Brother News Watch, February 19th. <clears throat> Drones with facial recognition are set to fly. Technocrancy News and Trends reported some of the first drones with advanced facial recognition capabilities are being developed by Israeli surveillance companies as American police consider whether they will soon be adding the controversial technology to their unmanned flying machines. As a sign of the imminent arrival of biometric identification from the air, an Israeli startup, one previously funded by Microsoft, has patented technologies for drone-based facial recognition. A patent application, published earlier this month, was filed by Tel Aviv-based Anivision back in August of 2019 in the U.S., detailing tech to help a drone find the best angles for a facial recognition shot before trying to find a match for the target by referring to faces stored in a database. It was titled, Adapted Positioning of Drones for Enhanced Facial Recognition, and filed by current and former Anyvision employees, including three from Belfast, UK. The patent aims to iron out some of the complexities of identifying faces from a flying machine. Various obvious issues arise when trying to recognize someone from a drone, acquiring an angle at which a face can be properly captured and being able to get good quality visuals while it's moving or hovering. Both are considerably harder than getting a match from a static footage. Civil rights groups ask Biden administration to oppose facial recognition. Washington Post reported, The American Civil Liberties Union and more than 40 other groups urged President Biden in a letter Tuesday to freeze federal use of facial recognition and block federal funds from being used by state and local governments to buy or access the artificial intelligence tools. The group says the groups say a democratic controlled government will be more receptive to their arguments of the software's bias and privacy threats than the previous administration. But the advocates are certain to face resistance from law enforcement and other rec facial recognition, recognition proponents who argue that a technology widely used to unlock phones and confirm travelers' identities should also be made available to scan for wanted fugitives and investigate crimes. Reject no COVID jab, no job, trade unions urge government. Times reported, trade unions have urged the government to speak out against no jab, no job contracts and warned employers that they could face legal action if they tried to force staff to get vaccinated against COVID-19. One described the news that companies were consulting lawyers on how to make immunization compulsory as disgraceful and divisive. Francis O'Grady, General Secretary of the TUC, urged everyone to be vaccinated to support the NHS, but added, the government should make clear that making vaccination a condition of employment is the wrong approach. It may be discriminatory and open up employers to legal challenges. Ministers must remind employees to make sure their workplaces meet COVID secure guidelines. LAPD sought ring home security video related to Black Lives Matter protest. The Intercept reported. 
Emails obtained from the Los Angeles Police Department show that the department sought protest-related footage from Amazon's Ring Home camera system in the wake of George George Floyd's killing last year, lending credence to years of warning that pervasive private surveillance networks will enable questionable police practices. On July 16, 2020, the footage was sought by a detective assigned to an LAPD task force dedicated to investigating significant crimes committed during the protest and demonstrations, according to emails obtained by the Electronic Frontier Foundation via public records request and shared with The Intercept. It's unclear if the police request relayed to customers through Amazon's Ring subsidiary was directed to a single camera owner or many. Contemporous emails released by the department shows that Ring's in-house law enforcement liaisons were helping officers use an interface that would allow them to send bulk video requests to specific neighborhoods or border <clears throat> geographic areas. The LAPD Safe LA Task Force is asking for help, reads the message from Detective Gary Chamberlain. Excuse me. During recent protests, individuals were injured and property was looted, damaged, and destroyed. In an effort to identify those responsible, we are asking you to submit copies of any videos you may have for redacted. The request appears to have made no mention of what exactly the LAPD was pursuing. No crime, proven or alleged, is described in the unredacted portion of the request, only that the police wanted footage of an unspecified incident related to a protest. The redacted portion of the request does not appear to contain any substantive further description. COVID vaccine passports could discriminate, experts warn. The BBC News reported COVID-19 vaccine passports are feasible, but not until we know more about how long immunity lasts, experts have said. And they have the potential to discriminate against the young, pregnant, or those who can't have the jab for medical reasons. This must be factored into any such scheme before launching, according to a Royal Society report. It sets out 12 tests which should be met by any vaccine passport plan. The criteria include having a way of accommodating changes in vaccine efficacy against emerging variants. And a vaccine passport would need to meet ethical and legal standards, including around data protection, human rights, and equality and dis discrimination laws. It is also vital to be clear about what the passports would be used for, whether that's for international travel or greater domestic freedoms, the report outlined. How's to grill Facebook, Google, Twitter CEOs as Washington seeks to crack down on disinformation antitrust. Washington Post reported the first hearing to be held by the House Energy and Commerce Committee on March 25th marks the latest congressional inquiry featuring Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, Google CEO Sundar Pucci, and Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. Democrats who led the panel said Thursday the social media sites had allowed misinformation to spread with real-life grim consequences for public health and safety, potentially alluding to the deadly riot that enveloped the U.S. Capitol last month. Far too long, big tech has failed to acknowledge the role they've played in fomenting and elevating blatantly false information to its online audiences. Industry self-regulations has failed, represented Frank Pallone Jr., Democrat, New Jersey, and other panel leaders said. We must begin the work of changing incentives, drive social media companies to allow and even promote misinformation and disinformation. A second panel of lawmakers 
The House Judiciary Committee announced Thursday it would begin its own sweeping effort to crack down on big tech. Lawmakers said they would start legislative hearings next week to explore the extent to which Silicon Valley relies on its social networks, app stores, and other services as choke points against competitors. A Clearview AI patent application describes a facial recognition for dating and identifying drug users and homeless people. BuzzFeed News reported Clearview Alabama, the facial rec is it oh no, it's Clearview AI. The facial recognition company that claims it's scraped. 3 billion images from the internet to power its face matching system has proposed applying its technology to everything from policing to retail to dating, according to a 2020 patent application that became public on Thursday. The patent filing was made in August, three months after the company said in a federal court that it would take voluntary actions to avoid transacting with non-governmental customers anywhere. The patent application, however, describes ways to apply its facial recognition software to the private sector as well as to law enforcement and social work, where it says it could be used to possibly identify people who use drugs or people experiencing homelessness. Thousands of Israelis returned to normal life with forged green pass as vaccine refuseniks otherwise barred from venues. Reuter News reported, Israel will officially reopen businesses from gyms and hotels to malls, museums, and libraries on Sunday. However, only those who can prove they have been vaccinated or have had COVID-19 will be welcome in the gyms, hotels, and swimming pools, and only they will be allowed to attend sports and cultural events. But having over 100,000 Israelis buying and selling fake passes on social media, a market the Times of Israel reported on Thursday, is already moving at a healthy pace, defeats the purpose of having a vaccine pass. The passes are going for about 750 shekels, which is $230. According to Hearts, and even before the businesses reopen, their doors can exempt the holder from quarantine. Barzik went on at length in his post about how easy it would have been to make a secure version using the same kind of digital signature deployed all over the internet in HTTPS and other common protocols and expressed frustration that supposedly tech-forward Israel had not deployed this comparatively ancient technology in a piece of ID considered to be so important. What place should COVID-19 vaccine passports have in society? Ada Lovelace Institute reported, The expert deliberation found that, at present, at present vaccine, vaccination status does not offer a clear or conclusive evidence about any individual's risk to other via transmissions, so cannot be a robust basis for risk based decision making and therefore any rollout of a digital passport is not currently justified. However, given that evidence on transmission will emerge and other countries and companies are developing such systems, the UK government must act urgently to address the public policy issues that arise and create clear and specific guidelines and law around any appropriate uses, mechanism for enforcement and methods of legal redress. While vaccine passports will be seen by some as a way to increase freedom, for those without a passport, they would constitute a denial of liberties that others are being granted. Therefore, the justifications both for the relaxation of current restrictions for some and also for their continuation for others should be clearly articulated. The government will need to take a clear position outlining the specific purpose and use cases for, for which, if any, vaccine passports can be legally and legitimately 
used, allowing some uses or actively facilitating vaccine passport apps, governments must address the issues and risks arising from such schemes or the creation of related digital infrastructure and whether and how these risks can be negated. February 18th, Instagram announces policing of private direct messages. Law enforcement team up in latest hate speech crackdown. The Daily Wire reported, Instagram announced last week that they will begin policing private messages and their latest crackdown on so-called hate speech. Citing targeted football players in the UK, the platform announced Wednesday that they will be taking steps to help prevent abuse and hate speech in direct messages. So today we're announcing some new measures, including removing the accounts of people who send abusive messages and developing new controls to help reduce the abuse people see in their DMs. The platform's stance on hate speech includes a zero-tolerance policy for attacks on people based on their protected characteristics, including race or religion. We strengthened these rules last year, banning more implicit forms of hate speech, like content depicting blackface and common anti-Semitic troops, Instagram said. The company bragged that they took action on 6.5 million pieces of hate speech on Instagram, including in DM, 95% we found before anyone reported it between July and September of last year. We need a fundamental reset. Shoshana Zuboff on building an internet that lets democracy flourish. Time reported. Shoshana Zuboff, author of The Age of Surveillance Capitalism, argues the threat to our democracy won't recede unless we address the fundamental flaws of the business model that companies like Google and Facebook have ridden to market dominance. A model built on extracting data about our behaviors and using the insights from those data to manipulate us. Zaboff spoke to time on what to expect from the next 10 years. The detail of the algorithms used by big tech platforms are known to nobody outside the companies that operate them. How do you begin to regulate something like that? We have backed ourselves into an untenable social framework where a few giant companies own and operate the internet. The companies are black boxes outside of the societal influence and democratic control. Their surveillance economics compel them to extract data from our lives at a massive scale. They simply claim the right to treat our private lives as raw material for their profit. The data comes from us, but they are not for us. The more they track us and engage us, the more data they gather, the better they can target, manipulate, and predict future behavior, insights that they sell to lucrative markets of business customers. Algorithms are engineered to amplify the most extreme, angry, toxic content, drawing people in to maximize data extractions. And I'm going to end that there, brothers and sisters. As I said, I will post the news link in the description box below. I do suggest that you go to this site. You subscribe to it. It is free. And that way you can begin to get the news that you so desperately need to know and understand. News that you can trust. Because right now, truth be told, well, you know, it's not just recent. I mean, it's been for many, 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 many years. You cannot trust the mainstream media. You simply cannot. I'm sorry. You know, the news, the, the the anchor people, they probably think that they're telling the truth or telling the real news. They are not. It's all fiction. I'm sorry. But when you can get, you know, 50 different stations in different states saying the exact same words, you know, it's all scripted out. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry it is. But anyway, brothers and sisters, that right there is just keeping you abreast on some of the things that's happening in the world today that you need to know. I love you all so very, very much, and I want you to always keep your eyes on Jesus, your nose in the book, which is the Word of God. 
and embed the word of God upon the tablets of your hearts so you will not sin against God or be deceived. Be blessed. Bye-bye.